Hey guys, it's me again. It's a lovely Wednesday. I'm coming on, coming on strong. I hope you're feeling blessed and not stressed wherever you guys are. So today I'm just going to talk about a topic that a lot of us face as chosen as starseeds or ascenders, which is to be hated simply because we are leading by example. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley. I'm a higher self channeler. I run the business up high healing. I just got it off the ground and I'm starting to promote it. So if you do want a higher self channel reading or session, I do specialize in that where I connect you with your higher self and the information that you receive is strictly to do with your life purpose and self and probably all the things you've been thinking about and the things you've been postulating that you can't really figure out, you know, not to say that you couldn't figure it out, but you are stuck on, let's just say. I'm able to tap into that form of Akashic and I can literally, um, or not I literally, I become the vessel that gets you connected with your specific higher self. So you may think that I'm kind of tapping into your brain in a little weird way, but it's very beneficial because it helps you challenge yourself. And if you are a starseed, a sender, or a uh, chosen, you know exactly what I'm saying. We're all on this mission of leading by example. We're all on this mission of showing who we truly are and what we truly are tends to be elevated what we truly are is getting better all the time we're constantly evolving and that's something that really really shakes the core of a lot of people we come into contact with there's something about us that just makes them go ape shit. there's something about us that just makes them hate on our existence and i don't like the word hate but it is what it is so i'll call it hate for what it is and the reason why is because we as chosen and as star seeds and those ascending, we're beginning, we're either beginning on our journey, we're in the middle of our journey, or we're just in the journey. You know what I'm saying? But the reason why they tend to, or those persons around us, family, friends, associates, workers, whoever they are to you, the haters in your life, they're simply hating not on you per se as a person. They can't even figure out what it is truly. Some of them could have even been really good friends of yours or supposedly really good friends of yours. And the reason why they were okay to be your friend then was because you were slumming. Because you were low grade like them. And I'm not trying to diss people, but what it is is that once you start ascending, you start realizing, hey, I'm claiming my power back. I don't need to be the scapegoat anymore. I'm going to stand up for myself and I'm going to put those boundaries up. And trust me, people can't stand that. Why can't they stand it? Because usually most of them were using you as a footstool for their low self-esteem. So if you decided to rip that footstool out, hey, you better believe they're going to fall on their ass. And when they fall on their ass, they're going to be looking at you and going, oh, I hate that. I hate that. Ugh. And you know why? Because you're elevating. You are now leading by example. And why are you leading by example? Because you probably quit a bunch of shit, a bunch of stuff. You probably quit a whole bunch of people. A whole bunch of things. You stop going to certain places. You stop doing certain vices. You probably quit smoking. You quit drinking. You quit partying. You quit associating with these slumming peoples that are low vibing. And something about you quitting all these things makes them nervous. It's not that they hate you. It's what you represent. What you represent is growth. What you represent is change. And I will guarantee you that those are two things that lower graded uh, or lower energetic people can't stand. Some of these people are still what you would call still stuck with uh, demonic undertones. Let's just put it that way. It's not that they're possessed. It's just that they are um, more adverse to, you know, committing sins, etc. And we all were, okay? Because like much of what the Bible describes about the 144, the chosen, and I imagine the star seeds and everyone, we're just simple humans. We've all erred in our own ways, but we have been redeemed. We have redeemed ourselves in the eyes of God. We have redeemed ourselves in the eyes of everyone else. And this redemption time or this redemption version that we are bringing forth like a beautiful butterfly out to the world is terrifying to these people because what it's doing for those that are not listening, for those that don't want to change, for those that like the status quo, you make them nervous. You make them feel like, oh shit, now I got to change. Now I got to get better. And they don't like that. We started going to the gym. We started finding hobbies. We started like doing things, you know, that entertain us in ways that don't involve drugs and alcohol. Or we got involved in groups and we started meeting new people without being high or drunk all the time. That's a huge thing. And for those of you that were always sober, Nellie's, hey, power to you, but a lot of us weren't. A lot of us struggle with vices simply because we can't talk to people. A lot of us struggle with vices simply because we're socially awkward. And for those of you that are chosen, starseeds, etc., once you got your throne chakra on, that shit 
sailed out that window because you were no longer zip, 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 quiet. That's a, not a no-go anymore. You're no longer quiet. Now, the thing is, is that a lot of these people that you were being raised around and a lot of these people that were friends with you, because they see you standing up for yourself, because they see you actually doing what you say, you are leading by example. You're not just talking up a big storm and talking a bunch of smack anymore. They're like, oh my gosh, look at what Sally's doing. Oh my gosh, look at John. He's actually like stable now. And the thing is, is that a lot of people were okay with you not being great. A lot of people were okay with you being low. A lot of people were used to you never amounting to much. And that's where they wanted to keep you because when you're low, they don't have to rise. When you're low, they don't have to do better. They look better than you already and that's good enough for them. It's like as if being the footstool that you were perhaps maybe in your past life like I was, you propped up their feet. You propped these people up, okay? Because realistically, a lot of the people around you know that you're special. A lot of the people around you know that you've got something to offer the world. And it's like in a weird way because they have a hold on you or they can contain you to a degree. It's like someone who has a lion on a chain. You know what I'm saying? They walk the lion. There's a sense of power to that. Even though they know that that lion could tear them apart at any given point in time. That's what the chosen is. We're like that lion that was once on a chain being maneuvered and run by people like our family and friends that were telling us that we needed to be walked on the chain. But once we realized, hey, I'm free of this chain and these barriers and we became the full embodied lion that we truly are. People got a little scared. People got worried. And what did they do? They can only do and resort to certain tactics that they're used to, which is to deflect, which is to do things like bitch about things or to complain about things or to blame you or to blame the world in itself for all things wrong. Like if you were a metaphorical lion, they'd be like, oh, that lion was so yesterday. That lion, look at its you know, its mane is just like not as big as the other lions, you know, they would just come out of their way to talk smack about being you being a lion. They make it seem like you're the most pitiful version of lion. But realistically, what the truth is, chosen, what the truth is, starseed, what the truth is, ascenders, you're a motherfucking lion. And the point is, is that you could eat their ass at any time. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? I'm not going to compare us to lions, but I'm just giving you an example. Because all we did, instead of bitching, complaining, and... Blaming the world for our problems, we decided to do what? We decided to do something a little different, like become proactive, like, you know, help ourselves out, take control of our own destiny. We literally took our destiny into our own hands. We became solution orientated. Uh, we actually started congratulating people for their wins in life. <sighs> Yeah, all this do-gooding is bringing all the hate in, right? It's all because what we're doing is elevating. That's all we're doing. We're just elevating piece by piece by piece. We're realizing that validation and congratulation is a way more powerful transmutation tool for manifestation than it is to shit on somebody. Because if you're dogging someone or you're hating or talking smack or gossiping, you're actually bringing your vibration down. You're showing your true colors of jealousy for said person, place, or thing. And it's actually lowering your vibrance because it's putting you at either the same level or lower because you're looking up to this item, place, or thing in admiration and jealousy. And once you realize that the world's abundant, once you realize that your confidence in manifestation comes from the belief that it can actually occur. If you're crapping on other people, then you're, you're crapping on your belief because you're like, well, if these people are getting it and I don't believe that they should have it, then the same thing goes for you. You don't believe you should have it because you don't believe others should have it. So please know that just because we started doing all these intrinsic things, simple, simple things like being proactive is not something that is foreign, but the thing is, it might be something that was foreign to us. It might be something that we never did. Like, I'll give you an example. I now can't stand seeing plastic anywhere. I see plastic bottles, I pick them up. I pick them up. And I'm not trying to get a, you know, proverbial pat on the back, but the point is, is that my old self, we never do that. You know why? Because I was so scared of what society would tell me that, oh my God, she's like picking up garbage. Oh my God. But you want to know something? No one gives a shit about your life less than you do. That's the truth. 
So realistically, if you feel driven to do something and be proactive, that's a core sign of what we've been going through. So I just decided to start doing something about my circumstance, about doing something about my life, just like you guys have probably been doing. And that's all you've done that has triggered all these people. And all these people are hating on you just because you want better for yourself. Can you believe that? Just because you want better. Just because you're like, hey, I want to actually be like everyone else who's successful in this world. And the thing is, is that a lot of people that are successful, and I mean, that could be in means of money if you want to put it that way. But even then, they understand the fundamentals of being in their God essence. Because they know that in order to even dare to be this way, they had to take risks, risks on themselves. And that also makes them a cultivator. And I would imagine that a lot of ascenders and a lot of... Um, well, I'm not saying a lot of ascenders or a lot of chosen, but I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them, these team leaders or these uh, leaders in general that already currently exist before this ascension ever started, they understood the point of doing what's best for them. Even though us as ascenders, we have to kind of walk that fine balance where it's like, we need to do what's best for us. That is in congruency of the all. Like we're not going after money per se, most of us. Most of us are just trying to uplift others. Like, I will let you guys know in my personal life, I know that a lot of people are now looking at me and they're actually coming out with their art. They're coming out with their comedy. They're coming out with things that they want to say, all because I had the courage to do it first, because I was willing to walk and lead by example. And the reason why is because most of us chosen, most people didn't think we'd amount to much. You know what I mean? Just like the Bible said, we are the redeemed. We are the ones that resurrected in our own lives. And that's what's so amazing to people. Because we are the underdogs. We weren't the ones that were the successful leaders that started off in the gate of life and actually were like, oh yeah, we're the best. We were actually the nicer ones. We were actually the ones that got thrown under the bus. We were actually the scapegoats in our families. So it made it really hard for us to assert ourselves, to find that inner confidence, to find that inner strength, that inner God strength within us. It was so hard for most of us. But the thing was, is that just like the rest of the population out there, they needed to maintain that lion. Because the minute that they knew that we were going to rise, that we were going to shine, watch out. Everyone knew except for us. And that's the truth. So if you are somebody that is on this journey and you are ascending, you'll notice that a lot of people are starting to hate around you. And it's not because they hate you as a person. They hate what you represent. And what you represent is change. What you represent is leadership. And what you represent is evolution. And a lot of people are stuck in their ways. A lot of people are comfortable where they are. And if you're doing it, you're sure as hell putting the spotlight, at least in their minds, that they've got to move higher or get out of your way. And that's what they can't stand. So please know it's not always about you. So that's all I wanted to say to you guys. But if you do like my cards, I'm going to be doing an energy reading. I've already, I've already done it. I've already done the, all the shuffling and all the, and I really hope we don't get the same cards as last time. So I'm starting card time. I'm doing an energy read of this week. Let's say this Wednesday to next Wednesday or just how it feels in general for the week. Whichever way. These are timeless. These are for entertainment. Um, oh my gosh, we got immunity again. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry guys, it fell. Oh, I'm back. But if you do like what I'm saying, please like, please share, please subscribe. It is a free gesture. It does not hurt anybody. So please help a sister out and help the channel. Oh, immunity is surfacing. Let's see if it gives us a sentence. Um, that's cool. Immunity is surfacing. We got immunity last time. And immunity, like I said, remember, I don't know if you guys watched it, but I was saying like how Trump has immunity. I'm like, that's a beautiful golden place to be. So it looks like this immunity. That's too many cards. I got, oh, mediumship. Hmm. That one like flew out. These are new cards, except for the immunity one. And then I'm going to do some clarifiers, but I hope you guys are all having an excelente day. Uno dio excelente. Sorry, una dia. Disculpa me. Mi español es mucho malo ahora. Uh, for those of you that don't speak Spanish, I was saying my Spanish is getting worse by the day. Uh, but yeah, I used to speak it fluently, and I would say as time went on, if you don't use it, you lose it. You know what I mean? Same with my Italian and my French. Like, if you put me somewhere where they speak those languages, I'll pick it up again. Give me, like, a month or two, and I'll be right back. But, And I do want to learn more Chinese and more French as time goes on. Linguistics is where it's at, because I was always pretty good. I always had a good ear for languages. So, um, 
yeah, I, I started learning Chinese uh, during COVID and um, it's really difficult, not because it as a language is difficult, it's the pronunciation because one word like our, there, there, and there is their tones. So it's like any tone is that's different can mean a totally different word. So it's more about perfecting the tones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I don't know why the big groups in chunks, but yeah, it's been super hot here in Toronto. I don't know about you guys, where you guys are. If you guys are different parts of the world, I'm pretty sure, but it's been like super, super hot. Like if you're American, I'm Canadian, but um, I know a lot of Americans watch me. So I'd say about 98 or so over here. And I wish that I could say that that is not the norm sometimes, but it is. Everybody thinks we live in igloos or some shit, but we don't. Um, here in Canada, it does get pretty warm. And uh, especially during our summers because, ooh, take flight. This is all so powerful. Immunity, surfacing, mediumship, and take flight. And you know what? That's funny because that's kind of where I'm at. Because next week I'm going to start, I'm actually like, this is legit. I'm going to be going out outside and doing live readings on Instagram. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I, I'm at Up High Healing. I also have an Up High Healing YouTube where I do channelings of beings that decide to come through. But I would say my Instagram is where I'm going to be doing the lives. I don't think I could do the lives at the same time. And if you aren't going to be around on Saturday, I am going to do a spiritual Saturday. But this time, I'm going to try to do it with pictures and stuff because I'm not a real techie techie. I was a, a law clerky clerky and it's been trying to learn all of this stuff. I feel like those really old, uh, you know, you know, it's not an excuse, no excuses. I, I'll figure it out. But I want to do is Jesus an alien because I've got a lot of old um, art that I want to discuss. And I also want to talk about different connotations in different books. And I'm not talking about books we have right now. I'm talking about old books that describe this in essence. Things are flying out. Oh my gosh. Blossoming abundance again. Immunity. Blossoming abundance. And for surfacing appreciation. And she looks like she's in a blossoming abundance place. So that to make sense. But yeah, the world's getting a little cray. I know people are all talking about the Olympics and all that, uh, you know, demonic display. And I kind of feel two ways about it. I mean, in one respect, yes, it did look a little out there. But at the same time, it did represent what the Olympics is from a pagan standpoint. Because all of the characters were paganistic characters from the original Olympics. But, you know, that was a little weird for everyone. And I mean, it's going to start controversy. And like I said earlier before in one of my previous videos, how I think France is going to pop off. I'm not sure if Paris is. I mean, Lebanon just started getting bombed on from Israel. So... It's like as if we're all just a big ticking time bomb here and we're all just waiting to see which which fuse blows first, you know what I mean? And I haven't been channeling a lot simply because of that because no offense, like when I was doing my Lord channels or my um, Mother God, Mother Father, some of the ones were so hard, but you know, if they really want me to do it, then I'll do it, but I've not been going out of my way to do it. these messages sometimes because it's like I see the whole vividness of it and I have to believe that so far most of my predictions I that I've seen have come through broken heart. So it's hard sometimes to be in my shoes and then have to try to relay it to people because it's like I don't know how people are going to accept it. Okay, it looks like woman holding a coin really wanted to come out. Okay, so we got blossoming abundance again. Appreciation. Broken heart. Woman holding a coin. Okay, give me a second so I can decipher what's what's up over here. You know what? I'm going to read this the way I see it. And I feel like there's some connotations towards myself. And I'll just keep those personal. But um, this immunity that we... I believe there's more than one. But I think a grouping of us has now gotten to a place in our ascension journey where we have become immune in the sense that we're no longer being hated on as profusely. The world is morphing to our um, our regimen, our wants, our wishes. We're noticing that we are co-creating and we are actually manifesting the world we want to see. So in that world, there is a sense of immunity because we know that we're free to do what we want to do. We're not going to be held down by society anymore. So there's an immunity um, alleviation on our on our souls at this time so I feel like that's at least what I've been experiencing and I feel like when I do these sometimes I have to speak with my own experience 
But that immunity, I feel like, is a soul immunity. It's like you can go do whatever you see fit in God's plan. You know what I mean? Like nothing's going to stop you now type of thing. And that's why I think blossoming abundance is coming out because we realize this, this in itself, just like I had said in one of my past videos about how my ex came back in that peace. That feeling of peace was something that was priceless. Blossoming abundance does not mean that it has to be money necessarily. It could be peace. It could be ease of life. It could be uh, ease of existence. You could be in the flow. And that's why I'm saying blossoming abundance is something that keeps growing. It's exponential. So that's why I think that's coming. And the surfacing, the bubbling up to the surface is you, okay? Whoever this reading is for, it's, uh, it's because you've realized you're immune to some degree, whatever's whatever's bubbling up inside of you is coming to the surface it's going to be seen it's going to be recognized others are realizing that you're boiling over so to speak and it's because they're finding an appreciation for you too a lot of people that might have been naysayers or the haters like i was talking about in this video earlier they've now come around for a circle and they're now appreciating who you were all along they're appreciating what you can bring to the world they're appreciating you as a person what your resonance is and i think that speaks very true now the mediumship and the heartbroken okay why i say a lot of us why mediumship okay mediumship could mean that you're having an insight into your own life or it can mean that you're starting to speak to others about your mediumship capabilities but there is this idea of like you being able to see or co-create in your own existence you're no longer blind you're no longer someone who's lost and confused you have direction and sometimes in that comes in a more well-rounded understanding of your own intuition within and that you can put forth to without like for example myself i am also a, a channel medium so i'm saying that some of us might be developing these skills because we now have become immune and, and we've let ourselves boil to the surface that we feel free enough to start to work in the medium world or we feel like we're at a point where we're immune soulfully that we can actually explore or play around with those capabilities that we have now, why I said it was like kind of like speaking to myself too, because there was a heartbrokenness that I had to face within my own mediumship because the thing is, is that I did lose some people too because of coming out of that proverbial closet of explaining to everyone that I am a medium, a higher self channeler. And there is a heartbrokenness because you know that like you can't be with everyone, okay? Like I know for myself, like there is a bit of heartbrokenness even in, as you guys know, but I think this speaks to it because that's what I'm feeling right now. It's like once you come out of them and you become a medium or you are a medium and you expose it, let's say, and you see the other side and different things like that, you can't just be with anybody. You know what I mean, like you can't just be because the thing is that your partner has to be under uh, like exclusively understanding of what you do is not intimidated, doesn't try to one up you, etc. So there could be a form of like broken heart or you might be leaving someone because of this mediumship because you've decided to take this challenge on or for myself. Like you see how there's a tear here. I've cried a lot of tears about this because I, I had to be okay with my intuition and my intuition told me a lot of, about my heart and my path with a, uh, love and because of my mediumship abilities it broke my heart because I knew a lot about my love um, interest my love partner and um, because of my intuition it was heartbreaking because most of us that aren't into mediumship we may not know what the future holds to us so I'm, I'm not saying I do but I mean as someone who watches energy, feels energy, um, reads Akashic, all these things, it's like I know, and I talk to my my angels, I talk to my hires, I get fed a lot of information, and sometimes it's like knowing kind of tears you up inside. It's heartbreaking, because just like I said about channeling God, etc., it's heartbreaking. Because the thing is, is like you don't want to be the one to bring those uh, messages to people, so there's so many levels that being a medium can be heartbreaking. But for whoever this is, maybe you are a, a budding medium and you are now realizing that there's going to be a big shift and that parts of it may break your heart. But once you take flight, you are going to be the woman holding a coin. And here's the thing. I feel like this is speaking to me too because now that I'm working through promotion, I'm going to start promoting like I've been saying this for some time and it's like I wish I had eight arms and I had like a whole team behind me because if I had more people helping me 
Like, sure, I have some neighbors. Sure, I have some, like, a couple friends. But I mean, like, a whole team or something. The stuff I could achieve, you have no idea. And the thing is, is, like, now that I'm going to be taking it out to the street and, like, really showing people what I can do, I know that this is my version of taking flight. So I feel like I'm kind of resonating with this. And I know that the money is going to flow right after because, realistically, that's what my mediumship explains to So me. that's the read for the week. I think it's really positive. There was only one card that was the same, which was immunity and bl uh, blossoming abundance. So it seems like whatever we were going through last year in G reading, we got a little sliver left, and then we got all this great abundance coming our way. But personally, I feel like all of us are going to be taking flight, and all of us are going to be finding all of the joy that we want to fulfill in this lifetime. And there's nothing to be scared of. Realistically, like I told you guys before, I'm still facing this fear. I come next week, I'm going to face it head on, because the thing is, is like I'm tired of being small. I've tried so hard to like really tell myself that because you know how I said about the confidence and manifestation it's like some part of me I know deep down inside wants to stay small because I like my small life in a sense you know what I mean I don't like being known I don't like being recognized I don't like those things because but the thing is it's in direct opposition with what my mission is my mission is to be known my mission is to help people help more people like having a hundred people is not really you know it is helpful like don't get me wrong but i should be striving even if i have to debase myself in some regards even if i have to be more cheesy and gitchy to get more people's ears then maybe i'm not saying that i could even do that but i'm just trying to say like it's hard for people sometimes to come out of this like proverbial closet because it means that your life is going to change like i can't even think about people knowing my name you know what i mean and calling out my name and and, and knowing all about me like I, I i'm not comfortable with that you know what i mean but i have to get comfortable with it so for all of you out there a lot of people want to be known a lot of people want to be famous and i do want to be famous in the regard but it's more to do with my healing it's more to do with but the thing is i feel like if people start demanding so much of me that i just hope i can hold the weight and i think that's where my fear comes from but i know a lot of us are in these different challenges as we go through this journey so this is going to be mine and i wanted to share with you guys so please have a great night i love you guys lots and if you are being hated on i hope this helps because they don't hate you they just hate that you grew